I just wanted to make a video to show some of you guys how to get into NFL Rivals and how to put together a team in the early game for minimal to no money. Full disclosure, I did spend $10 on this game when I first got it, and I'm really glad I did because it allowed me to build an entire team that was serviceable in the mid-game. And I know that sounds ridiculous, but but it is doable. So if you're going to spend any money on this game, the first thing you want to buy is going to be the Power Pass. It's 10 bucks, and it does drop you some pretty good players and chances at team building pieces, stuff like this. But the main thing you're after in here is the gems and the conditioning points. And I can't stress this enough. Do not waste conditioning points upgrading players that you're not going to have long term because these things do not drop that often and they are literally gold whenever you're trying to make blueprint players and get some of your team upgraded. You're going to need as many of these conditioning points as you can. So save all of those. Get the packs out of here. There are several packs that it drops in the, in the tree here on and off. Most games nowadays have a battle pass like this and... A lot of times you'll find it's the most approachable way for newer people to get into the game and start getting some nice stuff. So as you can see, this one's loaded with players, mid-tier players, a couple of nice higher-tier players, but lots and lots of gems and conditioning points. So that's what you're really after, because what you're going to do with your gems is go into the shop here and buy contender packs, which you can find in the player pack section. You can spend your coins on player packs, like these two bundles right here, the reason I don't do that is because you need your coins for upgrading players, and also the odds on these things are just astronomically low. And not only are they super low, the high odds are on dropping you players that you're just not going to have very long. Anything under 79 power is basically useless once you're past the first few matches of the game. So what I do instead is buy these contender bundles, and depending on what, if you're trying to focus on offense or defense, you can spend 100 more to get a focused bundle for either offense or defense. While the rates on super good cards on these are still lower, they are higher than in the other packs, but on top of that, you're guaranteed to get players that are at least 80 power or higher. That's going to take you a long ways in the early game and even into the mid game in certain positions, and that's how you're going to build your base team and especially start being able to field teams that can compete in the daily events that reward gems. Because that's where you're mainly going to get your free, if, if you want to call it free, I mean you're spending currency, but you don't have to spend real money to get these gems if you don't want to. The best place you can get those for free is out of the daily events for the AFC and NFC, which can be found in the daily action section, these right here. And as you'll see, once you have enough guys to field a team of just base players like this, you can pretty quickly put together a decent lineup just by buying those contender packs and upgrading certain key pieces if you really want to. And that, that way you'll be getting 285 gems a day, which gives you a shot per day at pulling a really, really good player or at least something that can help you. Now, what ended up happening to me is when I first started playing the game, I was buying those contender bundles, and I ended up pulling a free safety, I believe it was. He was an epic, so he was three stars, but he was a week five edition, or in, in the program, the week five program, and he was necessary that week to enter a certain event, which made his price on the mythical marketplace skyrocket. When I talk about the marketplace, it's important to note, I'm not talking about the in-game market right here. I'm talking about mythical's actual website marketplace where they allow you to buy and sell cards for this game with real money or their cryptocurrency, which is called Mythos. But we can do that in another video and go over that more. If anybody shows interest, I'll go ahead and make that video next. But for today, we're going to stay away from that. But what I did was I pulled that guy that I was talking about, and it turned out because he was needed for an event that week, his price was up around $30. And I went ahead and sold him on the Mythical Marketplace, and I used that money to buy all of basically the rest of the core pieces of my team, all above 120 power or so, which set me up to start earning more points and playing some of the more difficult games to get better rewards in the events that come and go. Um, the most important thing I wanted to go over with you guys today, we're going to do just a little bit of team building guidance on the offense mostly because that's the only part that you really play. And some of my favorite plays that are useful in basically all situations. The very first thing you're going to want to make sure you do is get a quarterback that has decent, long-range accuracy. 
You see here, Russell Wilson has really good short and long accuracy at 161 and 152, and his throw power is really good too. I did spend like $3 or so on him, but one really serviceable option that you can get for about 25 cents on the mythical marketplace is Davis Mills. His stats are not bad for an entry-level quarterback at all, and you can see there he's got about as good a long pass accuracy, actually better than his short pass accuracy. There is nothing more frustrating in this game than having open receivers. Even the generic stock ones that you start with will get open from time to time, and you'll try to throw it to them, and you're either going to throw it 30 yards over their head or 30 yards behind them into the waiting arms of a defender. It happens all the time if you have a subpar quarterback. The first thing you want to do is get a guy that I would say has at least 130, 120, 130 long pass accuracy if you can. The higher, the better, for sure. After you do that, the next thing you're going to want to do is grab a fast running back. I used, for the longest time when I first started playing this game, I used Tony Pollard. He's not the best back. He's 86 overall, but his speed was 94, which was pretty good. And that allowed me to hit some of the edges and open holes. Running in this game can be really tough. A lot of the times it's about getting to the outside and outrunning the defense to set up some of the big outside runs. So the higher the speed, the better. But you can pick up a guy, I think Jamal Williams, I think I bought him for like a dollar or two on the Mythical Marketplace. It may have been slightly more than that, but I don't ever spend more than two or three dollars on one player. So it was somewhere in that range. That's super important because that's the only way you're going to have success in the running game is with a decent speed running back. The next piece I would absolutely recommend getting is a wide receiver that has over 130 or so speed and put him right here in this position. Now, it's weird how this depth chart, this setup here has this set up. These two guys are actually wide receiver one and two, and this is actually your slot receiver. It's kind of confusing when I'm because I'm used to looking at you know normal depth charts, but once you realize that, you can kind of set it up the way you want things. This guy also will be important because since he is the slot receiver, there's going to be a lot of plays where he's your primary option. So you want to try to have somebody good at all three receiver positions, but there are a couple super important plays that utilize wide receiver two over here in the slot position. And that's why I try to keep one of my highest speed guys there at all times. Of course, the more speed, the better. The next thing I'd focus on, a tight end with decent speed. Same thing as the slot receiver. There are several plays where he's going to be your primary look, and the faster, the better. The offensive line is important because if you don't have a decent one, you're going to be getting rushed way, way quicker than you'd like to. But it's probably the last thing you should address because you can always compensate for the pass rush by dropping back further before you start to throw the ball. As the game slows down time when you go to throw, you'll still have plenty of time to find the open guy if he's there. So now that we've covered, oh, also, the on the kick returns, these two receivers are going to be the guys back to return on left and right respectively. So make sure you have the guys you want returning kicks set here and here. Now that we've gone over that, I'll just show you guys quickly how you can be competitive. I'm not going to guarantee that I'll win because I'm going to be trying to talk at the same time, but I'll show you how you can start to play some games of opponents that have considerably higher power than you. I don't like to go more than 500 or so power higher than me if I can help it. A lot of the times... The highest reward, like in some of the events and stuff, the highest option that it will give you to play will be over a 1,000 power higher than you. And that can be really difficult. It can be done. I've successfully won a couple of those games, but it's just really stressful and very unforgiving. One thing to remember in this game, the computer will never go for two points. So you always want to be up by at least one, which means the first time you score, personally, I always go for two. And if you don't get it, yeah, you've set yourself up a little bit for a rough time because then you got to pick up two in a row to get back to where you want to be. But it's usually pretty doable, and I'll show you guys the plays I like to use to do that. Now, the, the most important thing, though, is making sure you never go into halftime down by more than a point or so. And you don't even want to do that if you can help it. The thing about this game, all the way up until your defense is or rather your offense is, you know, five, 600 points lower than their defense. I think I said that all wrong. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is 
evenly matched teams all the way up to evenly matched to a few hundred points above, they're pretty much going to score every single time. You won't start seeing your defense get stops until the opponent that you're playing has significantly lower power than you. So you can pretty much in the more competitive games expect that every time they have the ball, they're going to score. And what you want to make sure that you're doing is taking as much time off the clock as you can before halftime and before the end of the game and make sure you're the last one to score, obviously, but never, ever go into halftime down by a touchdown because if you do, they're going to come out at the half and score almost every time and you may never recover from that from the short quarters in this game and with them scoring every time they touch the ball a lot of the time you'll just never get a chance so you've got to limit the interceptions the other thing the super important thing to keep in mind is about throwing interceptions it is so much better in this game to throw over your receivers and get an incomplete than throw short of them and get picked and I know that's obvious but what I really mean is the defense in this game can be unforgiving. If you throw it in the vicinity of a guy, he's going to stick his arm out 14 feet and grab the ball for an interception. You do not want to throw the ball at defenders if you can avoid it at all costs. Always try to overthrow your guys. With that being said, we're going to go ahead and jump into this game here with this guy that's 531 power above me. And I'll show you guys, usually over the course of a game, you'll get to see every play offered to call at least once. And I'll pick some of my favorites and show you guys how they work and what to look for. And hopefully that'll help some of you start having some more success and be able to win some rewards and get into the more intense competitions this game has to offer. So let's go ahead and play this guy. Hopefully he doesn't kick my ass while I'm trying to talk to you all, but I'm feeling pretty confident. On the kick returns... You want to look and see if you've got two guys next to each other who have been able to hold their block. Most of the time, they won't let it go, and you'll be able to shoot right through the gap. So, like right here, didn't work out for me because I got caught from behind. But you can get some really big. Now, right off the gate here, we've got one of my favorite plays in the game. Levels waggle trips left. This is the play I was telling you guys about with the, the wide receiver on the slot or in the two being in the slot. He's going to be open almost every single time. You want to make sure you throw it in front of him so he can catch it in stride. That's a guaranteed 10 yards almost every time, and a lot of times that'll be a lot bigger of a play. Diagonal 9, you want to watch for your outside receivers. This is basically a go route on both of them, and there's no kind of special trick to it or anything. You just want to watch and see if one of them beats their guy, throw the ball in front of him, and I threw it too far. But you can see how he was open. So on Dagger, Dagger is an overpowered play. This is one of the plays that if I see it, I'm happy every single time. You want to watch your slot receiver on the left side first, but oftentimes if he's not open, the one in the right will be. So we'll see here, he ran right past his guy, and there we go. So now that we've got that out of the way, now we've got to try to score two points. Remember, the other team will never, ever go for two points I really don't like either one of these plays. Empty all slants is a good play, but not from this distance. So we'll try boss, but I don't think it's going to work. Oh, all right. That was awesome. Unexpected, but really helpful. So as you see there, it took them all of about 30 seconds and they scored. And that's, that's part of the course for this game. You're going to run into that a lot in the more intense competition. So just expect that. And right here, I was able to get through there. It wasn't a great return, but it was a little bit better. Smash is another play. This is really good. Again, you're going to want to watch your slot receivers, see which one of them gets a step on their guy, and throw it to him right out of his break. This time it was the tight end. Oh, that was a good one. He's going to score. Now that we've already got our two-point conversion, I only want to make sure I'm staying ahead by at least enough to win, so we're just going to go for one point here. Oh, the elusive stop. That does not happen all that often, guys. That's a gift. Anytime they either go for a field goal or they're forced to punt, make sure you capitalize on it because it's few and far in between. This is a great, right before halftime, we're set up in a really good position here to make this game a lot easier to win. I don't love either of these plays, but dart can be good. So we'll watch the outside receivers on this play here. Neither one of them is open. I'm just going to get rid of that. Dancer. This is a really, really great play. The slot receiver on the right side has a, I guess he's 
Yeah, the one that's running the post route on the inside. A lot of times he'll just get a step on his guy. There's a play like this for the other side that's called Joker that also is very good. And there he just got the step, so we'll lead him a little bit. Perfect. Dancer, there it is again. See if it works. There it is again as well. Wide open again. Smash, here we go. Again, we watch the slot receivers on this play and see if one of them gets a step. And there it is. Eh, I don't want to throw that. There was a guy a little bit too close for comfort on that. Fade, this play is overpowered. Always watch the tight end. He will win this 99% of the time. And then I, oh, I thought I overthrew him. That play is almost as broken as Wildcat, which I haven't seen yet, but we'll get to that. The success rate is just incredibly high on that play. If you can, again, this is why having the accuracy on the deep passes is so important because you've got to be able to hit those tight windows. If you're forced to play this game only using runs in the short pass, you're going to have a lot harder time if you don't have an effective deep throwing game. Now we're going to get the ball back. This is a really good situation, guys, because of that field goal. We're up by more than one point. The game is pretty much as long as I don't screw up, and there's a good return right there. As long as I don't mess up and do something silly, we should be able to win this pretty easy. Uh, five wide slants. This is another play that's usually really good. Your reads are going to be your left receiver first, then your inside, your post right there, and then you can look to the scissors on the outside and see if one of those guys got open. Looks like this time it's going to be this dude here. Oh, beautiful. A dive. This is one of the only plays in the game that I will use for running up the middle because it just doesn't work very well usually trying to go up the middle on this game. If the hole starts to close up with linebackers or safeties, you can just bounce it outside to the left. This time it's open. Run straight up there. And they have scored again. Which is not surprising. Normally, you're going to be in a one-point game right now at this point in the game. If that was the case, what you want to do is just run run plays like this. Trap is actually kind of a weird play because if your running back is fast enough, you can bounce this play outside to the right as soon as he gets the ball and make some big gains. I use it a lot for two-point conversions. We'll try it here. There it is. But what you want to do if you're losing or if you're in a tight game right now, you want to use up as much time as you can and score you don't want to leave them more than 20 seconds because i'm telling you they have no trouble going down and scoring in 20 seconds now poker this is a great play for the slot receiver he almost always burns his guy and if you hit him before he makes his break you can almost treat it as another go route there on the inside it's open all the time that's another one of my favorite plays one of the only plays i didn't get to show you guys in this so far was wildcat which is a shame because it's probably the most broken play in the game it's a run to the right side, and if you can just take the right angle between the linebacker and the corner, you'll get 10 to 40 yards every time you run the play. So, oh, there it is. That's perfect. So hopefully I am able to hit the gap here, but I'll try to show you how Wildcat works to end this out. Right there, boom. Every single time. So as you guys can see, that guy had 530 more power than I did, and I was able to beat him by double digits, which is pretty uncommon. But for the purpose of this video, I'm really glad that it worked out that way. If you guys want to see any other tips and tricks or talk to me about any other aspects of this game, I would be glad to show you everything I know. Just leave a comment here, and we'll hopefully get some more content up soon if this proves to be something that anybody's interested in seeing. Again, guys, thanks for stopping by, and I hope you learned something.